Uh, Alexandra, what do you have for us this week, this month? <laughs> Nothing, I don't think. <coughs> it's nice and warm here, which is a... Oh, it's terrible here. Thing. Yeah. Is it possible for, to, to, for me to share the screen? Uh, yeah, to definitely. Make, let me make you... Yeah, go ahead and try and see what happens. Share screen. Uh, that one. Yeah. Good to see you. I don't think I've seen your first guys. All right, Pedro. Oh, wow. Oh, that's great, man. Wow. Look at that promise. Nice. Holy smokes. Nice. From the UK. Very nice. <laughs> Where's the clouds? <laughs> they are oh there. God. They are there. There's plenty of cirrus up there. Hey. And quite wow, that prominence is amazing. Wow, that is a beautiful image. Yeah, there's quite a few contrails up there as well. Well, welcome to the July meeting for the Solar Chat Forum. Thank you to everyone who takes the time out of their restful day to come and join us. I appreciate you very much. Um, the only news for the forum is that we're changing over our domain. And I think that's already been done and hopefully we won't see any issues. But um, Steve, why don't you, holy moly, look at that. I'm gonna let you talk a little while about exactly what you're doing and what you're using. And I'm gonna mute myself and just listen in. <laughs> Right, it's uh, a long 60, the Coronado on the front for double stacking, and a ZWO178 cam. And it's capturing through fire capture, and I don't know whether you can see the settings. Um, yeah. But there you go down the side. It's, it's been... Um, Capturing on and off most of the afternoon. I'll keep going in because I can't sit out here all afternoon in the heat. Not now. Um, and the sun, the sun block's getting a bit low. So yeah, hopefully I'll have some stacked images to show later on. But, uh, Very nice disc. Mm. Yeah, it's quite a decent disc. That I might just want brightening up a tad. I'm just up oh. the. Uh, Again, a tad. Whoa, back, 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 back. There you go. Something like that. So you get use gain then rather than exposure? No, I usually use up exposure, but uh, I usually set the exposure to between for HA between five and ten milliseconds and gain to suit. Mm -hmm. right, so you don't lose frame rate. So you can only that's one of the questions I asked for the meeting is yep. when to use gain and when to use exposure. And uh, with PGRs, we always use exposure, mostly for everything. But um, now these CMOS cameras are, the yeah, gain's this, pretty good. With this one, with the region of interest, I can just get 60-ish frames a second with the ZWO. Um, but I'm using one of the fancy uh, motherboard SSDs. Um, and with the calcium, I can get up to 85 because it's a smaller disc, because it's a uh, shorter yeah. focal length telescope. And brighter light. It, yes, yeah. <laughs> just a lot. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm down at about between 0.5 and one millisecond for the cat. Yeah. So there you go, the sun live from the UK. I'll repeat Brilliant. that, from the UK. It looks like you've got a bit of cloud though. Shh, shh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, oops. We've upset the uh, wildlife. <laughs> Very nice. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. So there you go. Very nice. The problem was sharing that. Amazing. Yeah, I wish I had, need to run and get the telescope out now seeing the problem. <laughs> Um, well, shall I? I wish I'd gone out this morning after seeing that, but uh, I know. I'll go over a bit here. See what that prom's up to. Oh, Look at that prom. Wow. I bet that's really good in calcium K. Whoa. Oh, that's amazing. Oops. Oh, you're all across the bottom now. Just a minute. I'll do it this way. 
Wrong way. Wrong way, Steve. Oh, wait. No way. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, that's incredible. Come here, you two. Wow. Oh, could sit and look at that all day, actually. <laughs> yeah. uh, so it's uh, it's quite a good one, that. Mm. I'm wondering whether I should put the uh, calcium on, see what it comes out like. Well, yeah, I'm wondering whether you'd get a really good image, mm. actually. Right. Before we go any further, I'll just capture at that. <laughs> <laughs> May I ask what uh, scope you're using? Lump 60. Behind me. Oh, okay. With the Coronado yeah. double stack on the front. Uh, yeah, I can't see your full, but I'll, I'll look at it later. Thanks. Right. I will come back shortly when I put the CAC on. Is that okay? Yep. Okay. Stop share. Right. <laughs> Brilliant. That is great. Hello, Alexandra. Hello, Nick. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Brian. Hello, everybody. Yep. Hello. Stuart. Hey, yeah. Hey, Stuart. Hey. Stuart. Hey. Everybody okay? <clears throat> Frank, how, how was your trip to the uh, UK? You went to London. Yeah. Enjoy it? It, was, it was fabulous. Just incredible. Really? Yeah, we we totally enjoyed that vacation. We went to see Windsor Castle, um, Westminster Abbey, Victorian Albert Museum, National Gallery, wow. the Royal Muse. It was just incredible. Such Did you go to Greenwich? Greenwich, we went the last time we went there. We went right. to the observatory eight years ago. We went there. Yeah, this time we tried to see things that we haven't seen before, mm -hmm. and it was, uh, it was just incredible. I mean, London is such an amazing city. I've always wanted to actually visit Buckingham Palace, but it's only open, I think, July and August, and that's not when we ever go to London. So. Yeah, it was not open uh, when we went, but uh, we mm. kind of like uh, went all around. There is all these areas where uh, there's little diners, the little all kind of places, you know. So it was a great, great vacation. Fabulous. The UK is fabulous. <laughs> yeah, because I think we tried one year. Um, I think we were trying to book it from the February. And even in the February, all of July and August was all booked up. And we're thinking, oh. Yeah. That's not very good then, is it? Yeah. I think, uh, you know, we were really careful with uh, with COVID, I mean, with the, with the mask and everything. We ate outside all the time. But I think that when we went to the subway, there were like millions of people without mask. We also went to Waterloo train station to go to Windsor, millions of people there. So I think that's when I got it. Oh, but God. Oh yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's, the UK is absolutely rife full of it at the moment. Everyone yeah. seems to know seems to have it. And we don't seem to have any precautions whatsoever. It's like thrown to the wind. Nobody yeah. seems to care anymore. And it's a bit of a shame, really. Yeah, and two days ago I thought it was completely over, but now it's coming back a little bit. Oh. <laughs> oh. So, yeah. But it's okay. I mean enough about me let's talk about you guys <laughs> <laughs> how are you brian oh uh, doing well um i think maybe the work schedule is going to start to slack off a little bit or else i'm going to stop going to work uh <laughs> three months of six days a week 12 and 14 hours a day i've had it and mm -hmm. uh, i think i've got one customer left that has any appreciable amount of work to do and uh I got to wash my hands of a lot of it soon. And then we're flying out on the 22nd to go to Alberta to visit our daughter who's working out in Western Canada for the summer and take a bit of time to explore out there before coming back. Nice. And I'm trying to get my observatory finished in the meantime, which still hasn't happened. I hope to have some 
useful pictures by now, but uh, I was out painting this morning. It's getting close, but uh, there's no rush. The other one still works. <laughs> Were you flying out with Brian? Uh, uh, with my wife. So uh, we're we're going into Calgary, and then my daughter's working in Lethbridge, which is in southern uh, Alberta. Yeah, so no, I meant airline. Oh, airline. Um, one of them's WestJet, and it's Ooh. not Air Canada. Um, Thank God. <laughs> we're flying out or back on WestJet, and I can't remember the airline for the other one. They're both airlines we've flown on before. Um, so. I mean, the airport's a mess. Uh, I think international and um, connecting flights are probably the biggest risk, but if you watch the news, it's Armageddon. They talked to the five people who had a terrible weekend and umpteen delays, but they don't talk to the 100,000 people that went through. Yeah, it took them a few extra hours, but in the end, they got their luggage and everything else. So um, bad news sells, so that's what's the lead story. Well, exactly. Ain't that the truth? But, I mean, if it was that bad, I'd have, when we booked the tickets back in May, I would have driven out. The only part of it is it's three days to drive. My wife won't drive any appreciable amount of time. So um, it just adds to the limits, the amount of time to be out there and do the touristy things plus visits. So um, we'll see when we get back. We're out to Drumheller and do a bit of exploring around the Badlands or the dinosaurs are and uh we'll see see how we make out in the mountains and go from there oh there's not much in the way of mountains though on that side of it get into the rockies then you've got mountains yeah well we're gonna we're gonna travel uh into eastern alberta a bit um up into uh Banff and lake louise in a few spots so I've been into Colorado, into the Rockies. I haven't been into the Canadian. I haven't been into Western Canada at all yet. So, so this is the be a wonderful trip in uh, calcium K here, Steve. Mm. Oh, right. it is yeah. just. <laughs> yep, that's they're good. not very bright um, on the on the baby tack. That's fantastic, man. That's yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. It could do with a flat frame, I think. <laughs> That looks good to me. That's awesome. So there you are. Calcium cake as well. Nice. Cool. Have you and been watching that all to... afternoon, Steve? Because has it been like that all afternoon or is it just lifting off now? It's been lifting off in the last hour or so. Oh, right. Okay. So there are one or two others around the edge. Move you out of the way. One up there, something here, something down here as well. Hopefully, mm -hmm. I'll be able to bring those out with processing. Yeah, I do like your double limb prom <laughs> that you do. I think it's fabulous. Can you yeah, that was, um We just had a little talk about uh, COVID. I, I got the symptoms, um, but never tested positive. And while I was in bed, I was thinking of different things to do. Um, one was to shove the UV Venus filter on the um, filter wedge to see what it looked like. And also of a way of producing this double comparison. It's amazing what you think of when you're laying there thinking. <laughs> <laughs> All the best things come to you at 4 a.m. in the morning. Uh, well, not not for me because um, I've turned nocturnal. <laughs> that's when I'm going to bed now. Oh, that's when I wake up and go, "Oh crap! Did I send fertilizer to so and so or not?" <laughs> <laughs> wow! Look wow! That. Look at those active regions. Beautiful. It's great. Yeah, it's a bit dark up the top end for some reason. What scope is that on, Steve? Uh, Attack FS60. It is capped down to a 50 millimeters. That's, that's great. As recommended by that uh, little spreadsheet and Mark as well. <laughs> Can I ask, uh, I ask a question there? Uh, so I noticed you went 
Yes. What did you say? 160 down to, uh, or, or what was the previous scope you had on there? One. The one I had on before was a 60 millimeter. Okay. Lump. This is a 60 millimeter Takahashi, the baby oh, okay. Takahashi. Let's one question. I have that same camera, the SI-178. I also have the 174, but yeah, you know, and I don't know how accurate it is, but somebody read somewhere, and unfortunately it's probably cloudy nights. But anyway, the point is, is that somebody was really going on and on about, you know, pixel size uh, for solar versus, you know, nighttime astronomy and how different, different it is. Um, do I need to worry that much about that, or is it? Yeah. You know, I, have, I have an 80 and a 100 once. Um, but I don't know how important the pixel size is. To my mind, if you get a decent image at the end, what does it matter? Exactly. Well, good point. <laughs> you know, it, it was suggested that I drop, uh, I cap this down um, to 50 see what it looked like. And it just gives it that little bit of uh, a bit more bite to it. I, I think um, it works really well. Um, on the, it's bigger brother, the 102, um, I capped that down again to 50, but because the, what is usually known as the manhole cover, i.e. the dust cap, of the 102, uh, if you unscrew the bit in the middle, it gives you a 50 mil cut down, which is ideal. So that's what I use uh, for that. But uh, usually uh, the scene is not up to the 102 here. I, I've used it a few times, but uh, unfortunately the scene is pretty awful. I'm surrounded by buildings, <laughs> uh, sheds, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, yeah. There you go. What filter are you using? Is it a Lunt module or? Uh, yes, it is. It's the 600. It's the little one. Yeah. I couldn't okay. afford the uh, the bigger one. Unfortunately, uh, um, again, back to what we were talking about a few minutes ago, uh, I was put paid to the planetarium job, um, going around to the schools. Right. Um, Just back to the question about pixel size mm -hmm. uh there's something said about nighttime versus daytime and fundamentally the, the the pixel size versus your focal length and sampling applies daytime or nighttime but the the simplest is with short focal lengths like this to get a full disc the smaller pixel sizes give you a better uh better resolution because you're not grossly under sampling it but uh small chips small pixels you wind up with you know clipping out a part of the sun or having to do a bunch of mosaics so it's a bit of a trade-off but in the end like it was said if you're happy with the end result that's the main thing yeah if you want to be to find, uh, if you want to be accurate a, about it well that's different i had a spreadsheet somewhere where i put in the guy's formula um if i find it out yeah we had that on our meeting two meetings ago we went over that whole oh. spreadsheet and uh, I have it here if anybody wants it and you know there's oh. a there's a line to there's a link to purchase that from uh forget which guy uh somebody on our forum sells it but then when you go to buy it it's it's the price is zero pounds um <laughs> you, mind guy that, a, you mind putting a link of that in the chat yeah on? it's that I, guy I that who's that guy that because I started attending these a while back and then for whatever reason <laughs> I always get the notification, you know, an hour after the meeting ends. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's usually about the time I remember there is a meeting and I'm starting it up. <laughs> so, uh, um, Rupert Smith, the, that's the guy that has it on his website for sale. And then when you go to buy it, it the, the spreadsheet I'm talking about, it's, I, it's I, a, I can try to go Google it. I'm, I'm going to find it on my computer and I'll just stick it. If it'll let me attach the file, I'll just stick it in here. But to be honest, man, I don't ever go by it. Um, and I'm not the best imager in here, but I'm not bad at it. Uh, but I, I don't ever go by it. I get the best results here in Atlanta on, on uh, calcium and H-alpha with a 100 millimeter aperture um, and the camera I use. I think the camera is, is you know, that's the most dependent thing. Which uh, one? Yeah. Uh, I think point, you use the grasshopper, right, or, or something? Yeah, I use a 
five megapixel grasshopper. And then I also now using uh, the, the player one astronomy Apollo Max camera. And, um, I, you know, I've got everything from 40 millimeter to 152 millimeter H alpha scopes and the 100 seems to outperform everything else. But okay. if you want an award-winning, internationally acclaimed, award-winning opinion on H Alpha, you have to ask Alexandra Hart, of course, for that one. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I originally bought the the 80 Lunt, the, their new. Um, the, uh, That's a fantastic one. The three-way one with the and white light. Sense yeah. The nice thing about it is it shares the exact. If you buy the 80 and the 100, you have double stack and everything behind the scope is identical yeah. so i just bought a, a, a the i just added recently the hundred uh scope so that I can switch between them depending on my scene yeah for a consumer off the shelf i don't think you can get a better telescope than what you got now for h alpha yes yeah, it's, it's their new uh what, what do they call it uh, yeah. the modular modular thank yeah. you Jeez. yeah yep Think. but yes that was the, yeah the new modular system so like i'm looking for that you know, it's yeah, nice uh, i just the 8100 share everything identical except for the everything behind the, the scope hey steven i just put the link to, uh to the spreadsheet in the chat cool thank oh, you per perfect I'll yeah i've got it saved on my computer here i'm just gonna throw it up here if i can find it but i'm i'm trying to find it yeah Download, download it now. See if it's the same. Yeah, but when you go to buy it, it's it's zero dollars. So zero zero ah, points. Right. Oh well, I, the one that he just sent the link to didn't say I had to buy anything. Now maybe it doesn't work until you buy something. Uh, that that one. Oh, yeah, that one. Uh, I think Arnie posted that to uh, the Solar Chat Forum two meetings ago. What Stephen was talking about. Yeah. I think, it's right. put it there. Okay. I think it's a spreadsheet that was made prior to Rupert's uh, spreadsheet. So I couldn't, oh, find, I, I couldn't find any place to download it uh, recently, but I, I saved it on my local computer and I, I shared it from there. Now I can't find it. Can, uh, can, I, can I share the screen? Uh, yes, I think so. Everyone should be able to. Just, to. just to show you the sun this morning. It's really amazing. Can you see it? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. It's this is a double stack image with yeah. a TV and NP 101. And it's getting very interesting. You see all these filaments. And the, the thing today was really very good this morning. And we, ha we are having a, a heat wave here, 45 mm. degrees. Oh, well, at least it's only 25 here. <laughs> and we class that as a heat wave. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But it's it's getting pretty interesting. Lots of activity and it's nice. But it's nice to see that image um, you can see in the southwest. That's that um, filipram that mm -hmm. Steve got lifting off. So now we can see what it was before it's now exactly. lifting off. Which is interesting. This was early in the morning, around nine o'clock or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's many, many filaments, huh? This day. Right. Well, you you can see them in, even without double stacking. They they are very clear. I don't but think I've made... seen that many filaments before all together in one day. I, I think it's quite I unusual. It's very. Especially you have one or two. Also, very multiple, very long filaments. Mm, really long. Yesterday it was the same, so it's mm. getting interesting. Yeah, I'm presuming that if one of those very large filaments lift off, we might get a flare, mightn't we? Right. Yeah. I'll uh, throw up images from yesterday if there's no objections. Yeah. Sure. So you guys have a monochrome full disk? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was um, yesterday morning through the uh, double stack 180 with a 
75 millimeter lung head lung on the front to do the double stacking. And uh, the, the filaments were uh, getting started. They rotated a bit further around for uh, Pedro's image today, but look, this one big filiprom across here was pretty neat. And this one here that uh, gave us the views earlier from Steve. Mm. And these aren't in any particular order. So this is through the double stacked 130 nice. millimeter scope my my homemade modular system um, but uh so this is a mosaic of kind of the western or sorry the eastern limb with uh, all the filaments and the two big active regions and there was a bit of activity here mm -hmm. i don't know whether that's transposing into new active region rotating into view or not um this was cropped out for the northern part of the disc and the southern part where these uh, prominences are. Wow. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come back to this one in a minute because I there's something here going on. I want to ask about. Um, so here's another filiprom on the on the western limb, and I should have panned up and done a little bit further north because here you got this prominence running across and or filaments and the proms on the northwest limb. Uh, the group on the on the western limb. And in the full disk image, you can see this loop yeah, forming. I got it too, yeah. Very interesting. And this was the uh, prominence of the day mm. today. Mm. Nice. And this was the act, that hot spot with a bit of filament around it. In the northwest, oh. or northeast, I should say. And this was um, the previous images were taken with a 1.3 times barlow I put the two and a half times power uh, power made on and the seeing was starting to degrade but this one image came out not too bad it was probably way oversampled for uh, for the scope and the camera this is a ASI 290 camera so fairly small pixels this is 3053 right pardon me Pedro? or uh, Franco that was like uh, AF 3053, the one before. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't yeah. uh, keep track of the active regions. There's getting to be too many. Uh, this was the uh, calcium K full disc with, uh, with the 130 and stopped to 90 millimeters with the uh, Lunt uh, B1200 calcium blocker and a K line Vader filter in the, in the image train. And the uh, white light with the Lunt solar wedge and uh, fantastic yeah. filter. Good work. But, a busy uh, session. You know, it was, a, it was a busy morning. Now I want to <laughs> zoom in on this image, and I think I can zoom in, maybe. Yes. I noticed after I processed this, if you follow this filament, everywhere it looks like the caterpillar feet are touching down. It appears as though, like this looks to be ripples, and where mm. the feet plant, it's between the waves. Now, I don't know whether that's just imaging, image processing artifact, or my mind wants to see something there. But does anybody else see that type of feature there? I do, and I saw the same thing on uh, August uh, 31st, 2013, at DragonCon, just before that giant prom lifted off and uh, oh. did that humongous uh, ejection. And it was actually in the same position that that filament's in now. And that's, that's the same thing I saw there. And after it lifted off, that blurry area expanded in both directions away from where it was attached. Oh, so this, uh, this kind of blur on the, yeah. uh, the edge of it. Well, that would indicate oh. that it's moving faster than the, uh, th than the features that are not blurry. I mean, right that it's more turbulent, which would mean, uh, you know, from my past experience, I'm, you know, I'm, that's all I have to go on, uh, is that it's more turbulent and probably getting ready to, to lift off. Mm, so that's one to watch then. During even during good seeing, you can pick that up visually as well. Yeah. That's the same exact way that one looked, uh, that, you know, that's that most shared SDO photo ever is that ejection that was in that same area on the sun. Back in right. 2013. Yeah. And you notice okay. the other filament does not have that. And it's much, no. much more diffuse also, uh, which would indicate uh, less of a, a magnetic field holding the filament together. 
Uh, I also wonder if for just the orientation, this one we seem to be looking onto this inside edge of it. This one almost appears as though it's you know, a much narrower feature. We're looking more straight down on it, perhaps just the orientation of the uh, yeah. of the filament in our line of sight. Like this big big one here too, it doesn't show any of that feature. But uh, it was late last night when I processed these, when I came in from deep sky imaging and I thought, I'll look at it again in the morning when my head's clear, but I could still mm -hmm. see what I thought were those waves with the caterpillar feet, for lack of a better term, sitting in the in the trough of the of those waves anyhow i'll uh, put the screen back well, interesting that yeah. uh if, if i may you know if it's overcast and raining here in atlanta for sean and i of course um, really it, and yeah. may rain please <laughs> yeah, it's, cloudy here. it's cloudy yeah. here too. but i did get out my i did uh get out my uh, pst this morning for just a really brief quick capture with my uh, DSLR, and that's what that looked like. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the prominence now, and it wasn't on uh, on on Brian's photos he just showed. So that's pretty interesting. I want to find that photo from August thirty first, twenty thirteen, and show you exactly what I was talking about because it looked just like that, Brian. Uh, I put the player one on um, with the power mate. Can you share it again, Steve? Because I knocked you off when I shared my screen. <laughs> that one. You just see it there. Yeah. It seems to be fading, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Uh, it's uh, changing rather rapidly as I mm. swap between yeah. scopes. And but I can cameras. see it going out a very, very, very long way. Yeah. Yeah, it's still there. It I mean, in my, in my opinion, that's yes. the difference between the two cameras. Yeah. More than anything. And this afternoon, change that again. That area there uh, did flare. It was very active, briefly. This area here, which That's I did manage. Brian showed right on the edge yesterday. Yeah, yeah, and it flared again this this afternoon. Um, Pity for the Aurora watches it was not a bit further around. Right, stop sharing. I've done. <laughs> oh, it's lovely. <laughs> it's done. really nice. It's really unusual to be able to get something good for you in the UK. It does from here, from the UK. Yeah. 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 So it does show you we can do something. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, uh, <clears throat> I was surprised when I was uh, in the UK that the the sun actually rises like at 4 30 in the morning and sets at like 9 20 in the evening mm -hmm. i mean it's incredible yeah very very long uh, sunday yeah because it doesn't really get dark until after 11 o'clock here um and then it's you know it's light it's you know it's starting to be dawn again by about 3 30. Mm -hmm. And it stretches out as you go north. So we yeah. saw that when we were in Scotland three years ago, and uh, it was still you know north of where Alexandria is there, but um, it's still not dark enough to do any deep sky imaging here until mm. pretty near 11 o'clock at night. It's getting bright by three, so that's at 44 degrees north. So mm. further north you go, the less nighttime right. astronomy you can do. Yeah, it, was like that. it was like that when we went to Iceland. Five years ago, I remember the birds chirping at three o'clock in the morning. You put the pillow over your head and. <laughs> well, yes, I've been trying, you know, to look for not to loosen clouds recently, but every time I get up about, usually the best time is around 2.30 in the morning, but just be cloudy forever. But during 2020, we had a really, really good year. Um, we had, I think we had the comet as well. And I was finding that the not to loosen clouds were so bright at 2.30 in the morning that um, song thrushes were singing at 2.30 in the morning, thinking it was dawn because the not to loosen clouds were so bright. It was absolutely fabulous. And I'll never forget that, you know, to see that comet Neowise, all of the, you know, like not to loosen clouds, the, the birds singing, thinking it was dawn. And it was just fabulous. 
and just last year and this year it's just been cloudy all the time it's been quite frustrating it might be also, useful tonight sorry uh, alexandra it's clear clear this evening maybe uh tonight possibly tonight. Yeah. possibly i thought it would be last night but i got up at 2 30 and it was cloudy again mm -hmm. Seems to go, you know, if it's clear like in the evening when you go to bed, you know, around 11 o'clock, get up at 2 30 and it's just cloudy again. It's like, mm. Mm. Frustrating. Mm. Yeah, I was I, I experienced a little bit of the UK weather. There was uh, a, a lot <laughs> of clouds and um, with gaps and then uh, very windy, very, very windy. We're having dinner at the restaurants and some of the salad was actually flying away. <laughs> <laughs> from the plate. Just you wait till August. <laughs> <laughs> so I was Usually about, in August we have great big storms that like blow in. I was thinking about uh, your challenges with the weather. <laughs> so um, uh, if you, let's see, uh, let me share again. So that um, filament that I was talking about was actually 2012, August uh, 31st, 2012. And it it looked like that. And those same little things are down in here, but it's just mm. this, you know, I wasn't nearly as an experienced uh, imager back then. So they don't look as good as yours, but it looked exactly like what you showed us. And then after it erupted, um, that's what came off of the filament and went in both directions. Oh, so it's a proper hydro flare then. Well, uh, it may have been or it may have been some hyper processing on my part, but it, it looked like that. And, you know, that's that's part of all that. I just, yeah, you know, I wasn't as good at processing it. Um, but let's see. Yeah, so that's kind of how it started. And it was exactly the same way that Brian was showing us with the little feet touching it in loops. And then when it erupted, of course, you know, it was awesome. Um, but uh, yeah. I, I can't play the movie here because it's ABI and I'm on I'm on all Mac now. But anyway, I just wanted to point that out because the first thing you, that I thought of when when I saw that was exactly what I saw uh, August thirty first, twenty twelve. Yeah, the so these big filaments. Then we need to keep an eye on. Yeah, over the next few yeah. days then. Yeah, especially yeah. if they're moving a lot. You know, I put we, the uh, spreadsheet in the uh, chat session. It's attached as a file. It's an Excel file, 44 kilobytes, so it's no big deal. Yeah, I, I downloaded it already. So it, it seems to be the same uh, one as the, as somebody put in, uh, as uh, Steve yeah, it's, Sean, it's the Sean one put in uh, the link earlier. Sean's version actually has more cameras. <laughs> uh, or the one, I shouldn't say, the one that he, the one that he sent me the, the link to. Uh, you can easily uh, add cameras too. If you just go. Yeah, there's a part of the sheet that allows you to add in cameras. You have to know the pixel size and the pitch and all that stuff. Um, well, you know, in my, in, I just plugged in my camera and, and, and scopes and, you know, it told me basically the same thing. I, the, the rule, I posted in the rule uh, in the chat, but the, the basically the rule that I built my own spreadsheet around uh, that it, it really has to do with uh, 2.8 pixel size focal length uh, or focal ratio that's what i meant so well it's focal ratio divided by 2.8 is supposed to be the the maximum pixel size i got you okay yeah did somebody mention cloudy nights on the forum a few minutes ago because i want to yeah, go ahead and block I'm, them I'm that <laughs> yeah it's bad isn't it <laughs> I, I try not to ever go there, but in case I may, you know, for Google leads me. So, um, <clears throat> no, it's a good forum. There's plenty of good information on there. There's uh, just a lot of arguing. Yeah, well, yeah, I completely stay away from that. But I, I and I included the link. Uh, the guy that posted that article did, actually did sound like you know what he was talking about. So, uh, whether he did or not, that's a whole different story. But uh, I, I'm giving this very similar answers to what the spreadsheet that you just uploaded. So yeah. that indicates that he did actually know what he was talking about. Look at Pedro digging up his uh, it's, it's, repertoire. It's, it's the same, I think it is the same, the it same is. filament. Or, no. It is. Mm. 2012. 
a long time ago yeah. with a DMK 51. That was on the <laughs> previous revolution. Yeah, DMK 51. Yeah. Yes, but considering <laughs> that was Solar Max in 2012, yeah. I think that the sun has got so much more activity on it um, on right. in the solar cycle than I saw in the whole of last solar cycle. Yeah, I'd agree. That way. I would agree. I'm very excited about that. Yeah, because, you know, like when you look at it, it's actually quite empty. And yet that was solar max was 2012 to 2014. And yet we're not in solar maximum at the moment. Yeah, and yet, right. so I've never seen so much activity. Yeah, that's what I'm expecting too. You know, and every time somebody gives you the the, the gloom and doom predict predictions, every time somebody needs to get some- He's put like a smaller screw on um, so that I can screw it further in so I can get more on band. And like when I used it yesterday, I was right on the limit of this smaller screw and it was perfectly on band. After 45 minutes, it had gone off band and I could screw it back in, back to its normal place. So he has no idea why it's like it. I have no idea why it's like it, but it's just the way it is. But at least I don't have to sit and wait 45 minutes. Now I can see it perfectly on band. <laughs> And just to remind me, um, like I have the, I have the, the Coronado, I, as you're trying to the screw, that's tilted the filter. The, yeah, the, the it's SLR. more more tilting, yeah. It, it's the same with the solar scope, is it? Yes, definitely. Okay. And is, you just remind me again, is it single or double stack? You have it's the double issue. Double stack. Double stack. So you are, you tune, tune it for one filter, first of all, I presume. Yeah, I've, I've well, I, I put both on because I know exactly where they both should be. Um, mm -hmm. That's the beauty of the solar scope is that you know that they're so well designed that you just know exactly where it's going to be so the double stack i never move at all it's virtually always in this um virtually untilted version um so it's only when the screw is just slightly nipped and i never have to touch that it's the front one it's that the single stack one that i had originally um that needs to be tilted so far um, and it seems to vary wildly and I have no idea and he has no idea either. He, he put it on all of the machines that he said it was all perfect. Um, so I don't know whether it's just the way it's set up on the tech. I don't know um, whether there's some flexure in there or when it heats up or whatever it is, but it, it's certainly perfect um, on band, but it just seems to change after 45 minutes and it just snaps. And you just have to retune it, and I don't understand why. It's like as if the heat is doing something to it and causing almost like a, mm. a slight shift in the spacing of the etalon or tilt in some way. Yeah, because actually, you showed me, you know, it's absolute, you know, like when we tilt these etalons, mm. the actual changing of the, what they do is they set it. Um, you showed me that they set it so that it's just slightly blue shifted. But when I say it's slightly blue shifted, it's sort of like point one of an angstrom. It's absolutely minimal. So that means that when you actually tune it by tilting it, it just moves it just ever so slightly to one band. So it's so fractional what they set it to. It's actually quite phenomenal, really. Um, but it was really, really lovely, you know, going there and actually seeing how, you know, he showed me how they, you know, like contact an etalon and put it together and showed me the spacers, you know, and how they put them together and where they put them and everything. And also he showed me right from the very beginning, you know, like getting, you know, like the, the glass discs, polishing them, getting them correct, then putting, going through the coating machine and everything like that. So I saw it right from the very, very start to the very, very end. And so it was quite an education for me. Um, and it was also such a beautiful place as well. I don't know why I've never been there before when you think that it's only sort of like a 40 minute drive to Liverpool from here. Um, you just get straight on the ferry from the Liver building. You know, you're there in three hours, you know, with after, you know, like a lovely um, ferry trip. You can see all the Manx Shear waters and watch all of the razor bills and everything. It was really lovely. And then when you get there, it's so quiet and there's wildlife everywhere, you know, and like even, you know, like at Solar Scope, you know, the first thing we sort of like drove into the car park and the first thing that 
it was like let's not drive into the car park because there was like a little tiny baby herring girl um just sat right in the middle of the road on the car park and it was like should we try and shove him out of the way before we go and run him over it's just like wildlife everywhere and it was just beautiful um I don't know. It was just such a wonderful place. I could really definitely retire there, you know, because it was just, oh, it was just such a lovely place. He's very, very lucky where he lives. And it was lovely to be able to go around the factory too and see how they're made. You can get to organize an official uh, tour. Uh, you can be the tour guide for us, please. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, he's such a lovely guy, mm. Helmet. He was so, you know, willing to show me all around, show me all of the other, the bits and bobs, you know, around. You know, he was so excited and so happy. It was just really lovely. Mm. I think you can get, you know, like if you tried to get that out of Mead or Coronado or some or Daystar. I, well, never been there, but you know, it was, it was just really, really lovely. You know, you better you, take your guns if you go to see Daystar. <laughs> <laughs> Good experience, anyway. Yeah. If, if you're like ever that. in the Isle of Man, I, you know, I do recommend. You know, or buying a solar scope, I recommend it because, you know, like with the exchange rates and everything now, I think that solar scope probably is, you know, the same price really as a Lunt or a Coronado now. I and. Uh... When you have your your double stack, uh, what way are you attaching them? Is that in, in terms of if the tilt of one, how does that line up with the tilt of the other one? Rotationally, uh, do they have to be rotationally in a precise alignment? Um, well, what Soloscope did is he took my single stack and he matched it to the double stack. So it means that um, what he's done is he's put the, the threads on it so that when you tighten it up, it's perfectly uh, um, so there's no need for me to clock it I actually you know, when they were all talking about clocking I thought oh I've never actually tried by turning mine when I turn it it gets much much worse and it is actually perfectly aligned you know when I, I get to the end of the thread um, and what also what he did is he made the tilt so that um, the double stack is virtually no tilt whatsoever and the single stack is tilted. So it means that there's no ghost anywhere near it. Wow. So, you know, they're, they're perfectly, you know, I, I've, you know, I thought that, oh, I've never investigated, you know, and after Mark was saying, oh, I do this clocking and I do this, that, and the other, and I thought, I've never checked that. But when I checked it, it was actually in the perfect position how it was. So he'd given it back to me, perfectly clocked and perfectly aligned. So you can actually buy clocking adapters or you mm. can make them yeah probably you can like that <laughs> and yeah i find that my uh blunt lines uh, will perform a lot better when they're about 30 degrees off from where the threads end yeah so yeah that's a that's a good service yeah, certainly with my PST, with the double stack, I find that it's 180 degrees. So I sort of like turn it so that it's fully screwed on and then I untwist it exactly 180 degrees and then it's perfect. Right, yeah. Well, I don't know if anybody even noticed, but I got knocked off there for... A good yeah, bit. we saw that. <laughs> and now I'm over here complaining. I think Pedro's screen is frozen up. His Pedro tried to, you know, it took me about three minutes to realize it was me that was frozen up because all of you were frozen, <laughs> but it, apparently it, uh, it didn't, it didn't end the meeting. I was worried it was going to end the meeting. So, um, anyway, but I do have, a, I do have a stop time coming up in, uh, about nine minutes, but I can let the meeting continue. It's just that the recording won't cover any of that. Mm -hmm. So just letting you know. I see Rainer joined partway through here. So welcome. Rainer. Hey. I had a question I put in the uh, in the chat here, or not in the chat, on the online form. Um, I'm trying to get my head around ZWO anyway, but uh, they're, they'll talk about unity gain on their, uh, like they'll show a graph and the point where 
uh, the gain is equal to one. And it's a, it's a different number for every chip. And I've traditionally tried to keep the gain on the lower side, like under 100 when I've been imaging. But um, I have started using the unity gain settings on the, the 290 and the 294 and the 1600 chips. And it, even though they run anywhere from 110 to like 140 or 50, I don't see where it's causing any amount of noise. I don't know that one. No idea, but, but I only use gain with the ZWO cameras because with the other ones, always no gain at all. With the, yeah, uh, agreed. The yeah. The thing so. is, I find that the ZWO camera that I've got is so, so noisy. I just can't use gain because it just makes it even worse. And it's bad, you know, with no gain. Um, it's just horrendous. Right. With a 174, I use a little gain because it, you, you should. Uh, but normally, I don't use any gain. So no. gain is, is a sensibility. So it, it, it should be as low as possible. But yeah. sometimes you have to increase it. So. I'm going to leave the meeting going. I'm just going to, uh, but I won't be available to answer any questions. But I'm just going to leave it going so it'll keep continuing. It's a pretty good meeting so far. So um, anyway, I'm glad that all of you showed up. And uh, it's been an interesting meeting. So I'll just leave it going and I'll, I'll stop talking. <laughs> Thanks, David. Thanks, David. Thanks, Thanks David. Thanks, David. Thanks, David. See you later. Yeah, we'll bear with you. Yeah, man. This way I can keep recording it so that when we put it online, it'll be the full meeting. Okay. I, I've got a wifely uh, list of things that have to occur. So bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll be called in from playtime soon as well. Yes. <laughs> And uh, Pedro, uh, is Pedro still there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry, you're back. Oh, yeah. Question for you, and uh, while you mentioned the gain, are you increasing the gain so as to significantly exp reduce your exposure time? Is that the idea, so that you can freeze the scene? Is, is there, is, yes. is, this, is the small pain with the increasing gain well worth the reduction in exposure time there. But normally I increase the gain and I get more images per second. So you, you can, it's it's a trade-off, but uh, normally mm -hmm. I, I, if you increase the gain, the, the, the noise will be high. So normally yeah. I don't, but with the PGR cameras, I never touch gain, but with the DMK, the same, but with the ZWO, it's a CMOS, so it's worse. But anyway, the noise is always there. But I, I use the 174 for uh, uh, high, high, um, with, with, when I use uh, uh, Barlow or, or, or Palm 8 uh, plus 5. So normally I have to increase gain a little bit, but not too much. For instance, today the seeing was really great. And I, I was able to use only the, the, the PGR uh, most of the time. And then at the end, I used the, the, the 174. And I had to increase. I always use a little bit of gain with the 174, but that, that's it. Another thing I would like to comment: my, my day star is off. It's completely off. I don't know what happened. The, the chromosphere day star, it it's ruined. I don't know uh, because it uh, even with flats, it's terrible. I don't know if you have the same experience, but I use it a lot. So after is one or two years, the, it's the quark. Off. Is it the quark? It's the day star chromosphere. Yeah, the quark, right? Quark, quark, yeah. yeah. So it's spoiled? It's not spoiled. I can, I can still use it, but uh, it, it's very different from uh, when I got it. It's my third uh, day star. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, anyway, it was great at the beginning, and now even with the filters that we should use, the key, key, the KG3 filter and uh, to, to preserve the, the, the quark, it's, it's really bad. I don't know what your mm. your you are if you have quarks. What what is your experience after one year? It's completely off. Do you mean that it's off band, or do you mean that it is really you know like um, an no, no, it's not really off band. I have a very bright image in one of the sites, and then when I try to correct it with a flat field, it doesn't work. So and, and it mm. it changed completely in one year. So not that's uniform different. across the field. Is that what you mean, Pedro? Yes, 
it, it, it's very bright in one side and very dark in the others and ah. you can correct it with a flat of course but uh it's not great can, can it be the blocking filter or? uh i think i think it's the mica uh, the, not not really the on top because the, i think this is the the part that according to mark that's the, the part that it's ah. not working but i don't know but I'm yeah. not going to touch it because it's. Uh, Are you yeah, going to send I'm it back? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure because I have it for two years now. I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe How get, much get is the warranty? One. Is it five years, the warranty? Yeah, I, I got it second hand. And oh. then, uh, uh, well, uh, it was it was changed by this guy in London. Uh, what is his name? I don't know. Rupert. No, no, not Rupert. Uh, the other uh, shop in London. Goes to, yes, exactly. It, yeah. it, it changed me, and, and he got a, a good one. But after one year, it's not got, not good. It's. Really I'd be inclined to send it back again. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> one I had last year, um, over winter, it, it didn't seem to want to tune. Mm -hmm. uh, so I left it, and I put a dual band around it. Uh, I put a sock around it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I left it and left it. And, um, and it started to warm up again this year. And I thought, right, I will have a go with it. You know, brought it out, still wouldn't work. So that's gone back. Um, right. So I don't know what's going to happen with that one. Um, it might be worth, it might be worth sending a, like a picture from when it was working in a current to Daystar and say, yeah. this is what's going on and see what they say about it before you sink the money into postage. Because I know everything that, comes and goes from Europe is 10 times more than anybody else. But uh, yeah. I, I think they do endeavor to try and satisfy mm -hmm. people. It's just um, if you can kind of prove the difference that you're not somebody that just bought one of these and expected to hook it up and take spectacular images, mm -hmm. uh, show them the background. And yeah, you really seriously do know this isn't working. But, but your experience it is that they change over time or because mine it's it was great at the beginning and now it's completely ruined so i don't, I don't well, mine sure. was great at the beginning pedro um you know Same experience you selected a really nice one for me um when i got it you know it was absolutely excellent um and then it just gradually drifted over sort of like maybe six months mm. um, I think that I was on band, I think it's something like plus maybe three or four to start with, you know, when I had had it first. And then after six months, it was like at plus five. And then, you know, after six months, it was just not on band because I just couldn't, I didn't have any more, you know, like turns on the, the dial to go. Um, and so it's just, I think that the, the heater just didn't work properly. But when you got that your image was even or you have a bright side uh, no it was totally or... uneven because it, okay. you you could see um that as it you know it's it's on band and it's like nice and dark and as it you know shifts off band you know that on band moves to the side right. so you actually um if you've got enough dial knobs you can see that it being off band coming in band